Well, Queens, I have a guest with me today, and that guest is a previous client of mine called Rosie. Rosie, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. Hello, thanks for having me. Of course, let's go into, I want to say 10, but for some reason today, my intuition is saying five. Let, I'm going to choose five quick fire questions. Are you ready? Hi. Yes. Number one, weights or cardio? Cardio. Three things you love? Uh, my dog. <laughs> yeah. My partner and chocolate. <laughs> Three awesome things. Although you did forget yourself, just saying. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Myself <laughs> as well. <laughs> you can have four. <laughs> Uh, that was two. Number three, do you have a favourite quote or mantra or saying that you like to live by or remind yourself of? Uh, something that my mum used to say a lot is every cloud has a silver lining. I think yeah. that's probably the one. Love that one. Okay, what one shall I choose next? Number four, if you could be an animal or a mythical creature, what would you be and why? Um, I think it'd be really cool to fly. So a bird of some sort. Yeah, with Just, you on that one. Yeah, that's what I can think of. <laughs> and last one, I might know the answer to this from previous conversations with you, obviously, but your favourite food? Uh, peanut m &Ms. Yes. Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to the cinema last night. I took my on a solo date and I had a bag of those as well. It's delicious. Nice. Yeah. So good. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. Okay, so I, like I said, before we press record, I have my questions, but it's just going to be very intuitively led and whatever direction it goes in is perfect. Okay. But can you go back? I know it was quite a while ago now before you signed up for coaching with me. Yeah. Can you share what you were struggling with and why you contacted me so people can relate to ha perhaps how you used to be? Yeah. Um, so I decided to get in contact with you because my binge eating was just out of control. Um, I felt like it was actually controlling me. Mm. Um, and it was making me really unwell and really unhappy and quite stressed. And I had tried to do different things. Like I'd done some reading, um, listened to various different podcasts and tried to do things slightly differently. But I just kept on coming back into that cycle of mm. binging, purging, um, and it was becoming more and more frequent and more and more intense. Um, and then I actually came across um, an interview that you did with somebody else. It was on a on a different podcast. It wasn't yours. Um, and yeah, just the things that you were saying really resonated with me. So, yeah. Then we started. Yes, we did. And am I remembering correctly, Rosie? Was did you have a dancing background? no but you were okay so I'm thinking of someone else but I remember you being very much obsessed with the way your body was and it was in the fitness yes. world wasn't it similar to my experience so can you talk about how you used to show up in the fitness world and how that yeah controlled your life so about four years ago I decided to go and try CrossFit mm. um and I just got obsessed with it um it was September 2019 um so I started CrossFit got really really into it and then we went into lockdown mm. in was it like February or something yeah I think it was February yeah. yeah and I built my own gym at home um and then I just started training on my own um and I was doing CrossFit running cycling all that sort of stuff um and just became really obsessed um prior to that I wasn't that into exercise I enjoyed the odd walk I did a few park runs here and there um but I wasn't particularly motivated um I wasn't there wasn't anything that I was particularly into exercise wise 
Um, so yeah, my exercise journey sort of started four years ago. Yeah. Um, what do you think got you into, what do you think switched from just doing CrossFit to try it to yeah. that obsessive compulsive disorder that you were in? I, I don't really know. I just, I just remember going and getting such a high from mm. this really intense workout and my body started changing. Um, I lost something like two stone mm. um, and got super lean and really strong and quite like muscly. And I'd always sort of admired people who looked like that and always wanted to be someone who was thin um and I just thought I could never achieve it and then I started to look that way and I just yeah became so obsessed by it um sorry I've forgotten your question no that was I can't remember what I asked okay. exactly. it was how the obsession began but I think yeah. it's to mirror back what you said perhaps it was you got sucked in by the validation and the admiration yeah. of yourself and others yeah having the body you had yeah and I people used to comment on my body and mm -hmm. the way I looked and it was amazing for people to be like you're so thin like your body's incredible and it was just the best feeling at the time yeah. Yeah. um it was also around about this time that I started going out with my partner and I just thought he was like the most amazing attractive person ever and I didn't feel like I really deserved him mm. I thought he was way out of my league yeah um so when I started to look this way it made me feel like I deserved him every time I did a really intense workout or really long crossfit session I'd be like yeah I feel great about myself everything's fine as soon as I didn't work out or I ate too much food I'd feel so shit about myself and didn't feel like I deserved to be with him wow yeah thanks for sharing that because I remember that was a key part of our coaching wasn't it? it it always linked back to you not feeling like you were worthy of him if you didn't look a certain way or eat a certain way and yes. that came from you he had no say or he was having no pressure towards you was no. he about what you looked like or what you ate or didn't eat no not at all um in fact it's like the opposite um yeah so it was all created in my own mind from a place of huge insecurity um, yeah. and just really disliking myself. I remember when, when I asked you to send me your typical exercise regime for the week and then you sent it me and then you were like, do you think that's too much or do I need to be doing more? And I lovingly laughed out loud to you and was like, <laughs> Rosie... You're doing like 10 times more than you should actually be doing in a month, let alone a week. I mean, yeah. it was intense. I was addicted to exercise, but it even it topped what I used to do. And I don't even know how your body was OK. Well, it wasn't OK. Tell us about no. what happened because of all that over exercising. Yeah. So uh, about probably three and a half months ago, I was in the gym and I did something really simple. I jumped up onto a barbell plate. It was part of my warm up, and my back just went um, and I was in so much pain. And then about three days later, this horrific sciatica started and eventually I couldn't walk. Uh, I couldn't sit. I couldn't lie down on my back. I couldn't lie down on my right side. I could only get comfortable by lying on my front or lying on my left side. Mm. Um, and I was just completely crippled. Um, I had never experienced pain like it. It was just so horrific. Um, so I prolapsed my disc um, and that was through a, an accumulation of, I believe just overtraining, damaging my back from weightlifting, probably with not very good technique. Mm. Um, I mentioned that I set up my own gym during lockdown, um, at which I'd only been doing CrossFit for like, what, six months maybe. And I started doing this quite intense program on my own where there was no one watching me. So mm. I'm also hypermobile as well. So I can like squat really low. Um, and I was trying to 
like PB all the time, um, yeah. not eating enough, not resting. I hated rest days, could not cope with them mentally. I felt lost. I felt like I had no identity. It was really mm. weird. Um, so I would avoid resting. Um, so I think it was an accumulation of probably lifting a bit too much weight with not very good technique, not resting, doing loads of cardio, not eating right. Mm. Um, and then maybe like a bit of bad luck maybe I think some people are prone to discord yeah. and things like that so but I definitely could have avoided it had I have looked after myself a little bit better yeah and so when and I want to go into your recovery in a moment but let's just go back to the food stuff when you came to me yeah. did you think that working together would and I'm going to use air quotes work in terms of like stop your binge eating and why or why not in regards to what you think about the question so I was quite skeptical at the beginning just because I felt like I tried loads of different things and it and it hadn't worked Mm. but I think the main thing that we worked on which I needed help with was liking myself a bit more yeah um, because as I probably already made clear, the training came from a place of disliking myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that was like the main thing that I really needed to work on um, in order to start my recovery. Um, and it definitely did help me. Um, but it was only until... I couldn't exercise anymore because of my injury that things really started to change for me yeah Um, I think there was a part of me that was it was like 70% of me really wanted to recover from the the eating overeating and the purging and the over exercise and I wanted to work on these things with you but there was like 30% of me that was like no you're you're not really going to commit to this properly because you need to carry on the way that you're going to Um, feel good enough to feel good yeah yeah um and it was only when I physically couldn't move and realizing what I'd done to myself Mm. um and spending so it's been yeah just over three months now um just not not being able to exercise and realizing that I'm I can cope and I'm and I'm still here yeah Um, and like my relationship has just improved so much because I'm not always buggering off to the gym or like getting so exhausted that I'm so moody yeah I'm just a lot more relaxed and I'm just content wow how would you say your relationship with food has changed and why do you think that has been um I now pretty much eat what I want whenever I want to eat it um I don't really have any restriction I I don't have any restriction I try to eat well in order to fuel my body especially when I've been recovering from the surgery I knew that what I was eating was so important yeah Um, but if I crave something I'll just have it I don't I don't restrict in any way and I feel so much better for it I feel like I'm just like free (laughs) yes music to my ears because we think the binging is a problem but it's a restriction that's a problem absolutely um one of the things that I remember you asking me to do was to have something of what I really want to eat every day yeah and that terrified me and I tried to do it for like a little bit and then I went back to my old ways um and then I did it again and as I said, since the injury, um, just eating what I want whenever I want it, it's now not an issue. And I used to like just eat a whole jar of Nutella and feel so ill afterwards. But now I don't even want to. Like yeah. It does not appeal to me. Yeah, I'd maybe have a couple of spoonfuls and I'd probably really enjoy it, but I would never eat the whole jar. And I, I just don't want to. Yeah, isn't it amazing? Um, Because I, as you know, I was the Nutella fiend. And I was like, I'm never going to get over this obsession with Nutella. And now I'm like, I don't even want, I mean, like like you, I'd have a spoon and I'll be like, I'll be done. I would, I'd totally be fine and complete with the Nutella. Yeah. 
and that only comes from allowance and it, it, it's quite funny like yesterday for example I was really craving pick and mix and chocolate and carbs and I just said to my partner I was like okay tonight we're having snacks so I went and got loads of snacks what I thought was loads of snacks not loads of snacks just a normal amount maybe a bit too much and I didn't feel bad about it I really enjoyed it and I just I don't overeat anymore like I'm not eating to the point where I don't want to be eating it like, yes I'll feel full and satisfied and then that's enough I don't go past that point it's like I'm not able to binge anymore I just I can't because my body doesn't need to so yes because you're actually nourishing yourself and you're taking care of yourself yeah what do you think changed that enabled you to actually start liking who you are and knowing that you were enough without having to be a certain size um I don't I wouldn't say that I particularly love my I'm not I'm not confident still I don't like think I look amazing I don't particularly like the way I look but I've realized that I have to look after myself Mm. so I have that love of just wanting to look after myself now and to make sure that I'm healthy and I can go and do the things all that I I really love um and I can't do those things if I'm abusing myself yeah um so it's sort of like acceptance now of of who I am and I know I'm I'm not supposed to be really thin I'm 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 quite curvy and I I, I'm not really lean naturally and that's fine like I'm cool with that now um my partner's obviously like so complimentary about how I look which is really nice and it's definitely helped me Hmm. um but for myself it's just about looking after myself now that is wonderful and do you mind sharing how your relationships changed how you went because you used to pick arguments if I remember like didn't you with him because you didn't feel enough so you'd like be angry towards him to almost cause him to 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 not want to be with you because you didn't think you were worthy of it so how did that change if you don't mind sharing about that um it's changed quite a lot of ways really so so for example if we had a weekend off together I would just be disappearing off to the gym or for a run so we we were never able to really go out as a family with with his son um to go and do something together because I would be doing exercise Mm -hmm. and that used to create a lot of tension um understandably um I used to get really, really exhausted, which would make me really moody. And then we'd argue because I would just be a bit of a bitch. Mm. Um, He used to get really frustrated because he could see what was happening. And he could see all this, like, I wasn't eating properly. And it really, really frustrated him. And I just didn't listen. And then I started to hide it from him. Um, So I'd... I was like cheating on cheating on him with the gym basically mm. um, I'd say I was doing something else but I was actually at the gym um, yeah. and I used to like have this obsession with protein bars and energy drinks that was kind of what I was living on like these ultra processed protein bars I'd have like two a day I'd have one for breakfast that would be my breakfast after a CrossFit session and he just got so wound up about it because <laughs> he cares about you doesn't he, he wants you yeah to exactly he could see what was happening and he yeah. would say over and over again you're gonna really fuck yourself up it's gonna happen and I'm like no 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 I'm fine I, I'm looking after myself and, and you knew you wasn't <laughs> yeah yeah what would you say the hardest and best part of coaching or your journey more so has been well so let's start with the most challenging part would you say um the most challenging part was trying to reintroduce what I deemed as bad foods Mm. into my life daily on a daily basis I really struggled with that Mm. to let, let go of that control um and then uh taking my watch off my oh yes, family. I remember that conversation. 
yeah I just couldn't let go of it because I was tracking my exercise and my steps all the time and I was so obsessed with it and I remember you asking me to take it off and I think I took it off for like a day and then yeah, I had you, to you put it on. in a drawer in your dad's some it was something to do with your dad's drawer I remember Oh, I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember, but I tried to take it off and I took it off for a little bit and then I put it back on again. And then when I hurt myself, um, I, there's literally no point in me wearing it because I wasn't moving. So yeah. for, eight, for about three months, I didn't wear it and I just wasn't bothered at all. And now I'm wearing it, but I don't track anything. Um, what do I, you wear it for? I'm just curious the time literally, literally for the time <laughs> literally just to look at the time like I don't I used to track every single walk I did everything was recorded obviously it was hidden so no one could see it on Strava or Garmin because I didn't want anyone to know how much I was doing it was purely for myself to track absolutely everything yeah um, so would you say that what happened to you with your slip disc was actually such a gift in a way yeah. I'm 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 hoping so um because I've still in I could get a bit of discomfort and I've got um damage from um the compression on my nerves so I'm still in a little bit of discomfort and I'm still not 100% mm -hmm. but I'm I'm starting to see and I and I I hope that this is going to be a blessing yeah um, because I feel like I've learned so much and I have such a different outlook on exercise and food now yeah um, I feel like the universe gives you nudges and yeah. then if you don't listen it will like slap you around the face and then you still didn't listen to that and then it will literally put you on your back yeah no choice because this was your path to learn and understand that you can't keep going like this because you're going to have no life no partner no. because you'd have pushed him away like no yeah. like I know what it was like to be that obsessive yeah so in a way the universe has intervened and been like now you have no choice yeah and let's see what you do with this and what I can see is you've just ran with it in the best way possible and just learned so much about yourself yeah from this really traumatic thing happening to you yeah absolutely and I realized what's really important to me and what I actually love to do and what gives me like joy and, and happiness. And I said, I said to my partner when I was really bad, I was like, I just want to be able to walk my dog. That's just, that's just, I want to be able to go out and take Ellie out for a walk. And, and I, I don't take that for granted at all. Now I'm, I'm happy just, walking but yeah. if that's my exercise for the day like that's great that's amazing um and I, like what I really like doing as well is mountain biking but I never let myself do that on a weekend because I didn't think that it was enough exercise yeah unless I was in the gym absolutely hammering it mm -hmm. I wasn't satisfied and now I'm just, I can't wait to be able to get back onto my bike over the weekend when I'm not in work and just enjoy going out for a ride and not feeling that pressure to have to be in the gym as well. Yeah, that's um, amazing. I just what feel like I've just been like freed and released from this mm. prison of exercise. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So much, yes, because you do get the dopamine hit when you've when you've trained and when you've exercised. Ah. And those with addictive personalities, I don't want to kind of label that, but I just have, and I really feel that it's a thing because I'm yeah. very similar to you. Yeah. Those things that do give us like this rush of pleasure can be addictive, especially with the validation and all of that. But to be able to be in tune with your body now and actually take care of you, mm -hmm. that's worth so much more than that intense yes. rush that actually doesn't mean any, anything to you because you've let go of who you think you need to be in order to be accepted. Yeah. Yes. What was the best thing or your favorite thing about your journey or coaching or both? Um, 
oh, it, I've got such an obsession with food. Sorry, I keep talking about it. Um, well, we all, have, everyone listening to this podcast is obsessed with food. Trust yeah, me, okay, that's go right. for it. <laughs> um, my absolute favourite thing has been being able to eat what I want every day. Mm. That's yeah. like the best thing which I've learned to do. Yeah. And um, it, the thing is, most people who haven't had disordered, well, who haven't had eating disorders, but I would probably say they're in disordered eating because society's mm. normal is disordered eating. Yeah. Even people who are, quote, have a normal relationship with food, they don't allow themselves to eat what they want every day. No, I know. I, yeah. yeah, I know exactly. Um, so I, I think the thing with food as well started because I would allow myself to eat whatever I wanted on the weekend, but I would massively restrict in the week. Yeah. So that I what I thought was a good thing to do initially when I first got into exercise and, and fitness and stuff, I realize now was so unhealthy. Like you're just creating a problem for yourself because you are restricting. Yeah. You're restricting for five days of the week and it, I was like compensating throughout the week for what I knew I was going to eat on the weekend. Yeah. And then I would just go mental over the weekend. Totally. It Um, is like the fitness industry, not everyone, but they teach you how to binge by calling them cheat days. Yeah. And to reset your leptin levels and all of that stuff. I know. It's just, looking back now, I think it is crazy. Yeah. Just creating a problem yeah um whereas if you just have complete freedom around food that craving and that like i the obsession with eating something just goes away because there's no issue surrounding it it's absolutely fine yeah um and you can enjoy it for what it is because when you're judging yourself you when you were quote binging in the past you can't actually fully enjoy it because there's so much guilt as well um, yeah um the other thing is I never had any hunger cues like my appetite just went really weird I would never get that hunger you know that feeling of hunger in your stomach yeah I never had that ever even though I was restricting or like I would just feel really fatigued and it's only now that I've stopped the um restriction my hunger cues have come back so if I'm feeling hungry I'll just eat I know that's my body telling me you need to eat now um so that's all sort of like sorted itself out and gone back to normal yeah that's awesome Rosie what would you say so people that listen to this podcast there's a mixture of those that are in anorexia recovery bulimia binge eating disordered eating all the things so thinking of your journey if you could pick three things that would help someone so go back to where you were pretend you didn't have coaching yeah if you could get told three things that would start to help you on this journey to food freedom and accept body acceptance what would those three things be do you think that you would need to, to have here here heard um it's difficult because I don't think there's anything that anyone could have said to me really because I was so obsessed yeah. um but looking after yourself is so incredibly important for like longevity. If you want to be able to go for a run when you're 60, you need to look after yourself now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is through resting, um, eating right, eating well to fuel yourself and look after yourself, but also for pleasure as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah I can't really think of three things other than right. just the yourself. importance yeah yeah it's okay. like for the, for the long game it's for for the you're looking after yourself today for your health for the rest of your life yeah um, yeah and that's what you said that one thing it's such a broad spectrum isn't it so looking after yourself means stopping restriction fueling yes. yourself sleeping enough being yes. kind to yourself all the things so it's actually a yes. big deal yes what would you say to someone who has listened to this who really resonates with your story who's wondering whether to reach out to get help whether that's with me or with somebody else that they've yes. been listening or watching in in the past 
what would you say to them if they're like, shall I try and do it on my, on my own? Shall I get help? So obviously there's an investment involved as well, like a money yeah. exchange. What would you say to that person? I would definitely recommend to get a coach or some help because for example with yourself you taught me to look at things in a completely different way and approach things in a way that I'd never even considered um and it's just through these little like strategies and and little tips that you sort of introduce different things into your life and and approach things slightly differently Mm -hmm. um and that support of being able to chat things through with somebody who can guide you is so invaluable yeah um so yeah i absolutely recommend to get some support um otherwise we just yeah i i don't know how like well i definitely ended up in a really bad position but just to get help as soon as possible if you think you need it yeah thank you rosie and is there anything that I've not asked you that perhaps you wanted to share, bearing in mind the audience that might be listening? Um, so, yeah, there's one one thing is I think that I was bulimic, but I wasn't bulimic in the original sense of trying to make myself sick. My purging wasn't through making myself sick. My purging was through after a binge I wouldn't eat the next day and I would go for like a five mile run I'd do crossfit for an hour and a half and then I'd walk as well that was my version of you were purging through because any kind of purging behavior is trying to compensate yes food and that was your exercise yeah and I didn't think that I had an eating disorder but I because I didn't make myself sick Mm. because that's what people think bulimia is yeah traditionally yeah um but I realized that I was absolutely bulimic and I had such quite a severe eating disorder and and disorder with exercise as well Mm. um and I think sometimes people don't see it as a problem unless you're doing the things like making yourself sick you're not really deemed as having a disorder um but it was making me really ill so I'm really glad you spoke to that because some so many people especially those that aren't in a thin body as well think they're not exactly enough yes people unless you're like absolutely tiny Mm. um people don't think that you've got a problem but it doesn't matter what size you are what you're doing like if you have a problem which you feel is out of control and is making you unhappy and 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 poorly then like you seek the help that you need and you are totally entitled to it yes amen to that thank you rosie thank you so much for sharing about yourself today i I hope that i might be able to help some people who may be experiencing something similar yeah, I I know you will. And if they did want to reach out to you to ask you any questions, are you open to that for me to put your Instagram in the link? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Rosie. Lots okay, of love. Thank to you. you. Next week, listeners, I will see you next week. Lots of love.